Hello, welcome to sim.pc where it is 16.34 and I would just like to begin with saying I am so tired. I don't even know why. I mean, I went to sleep at like 12, like 11 yesterday, 11 p.m. Woke up today at 8 and I was just like 9 hours of sleep and still broken. <laughs> no, not broken, of course, but still like so tired. And I went to school and we had a bit of a meeting. We sat for three hours just reading a bunch of stuff so that we can actually get into the meat and potatoes of our project, our of our thing, so we can actually start writing. And I barely made a day. I mean, it's weird in a way. I don't even know why. I have nothing to stress for, I think. Uh, but no, as far as I know, I have nothing to be stressed for. I have nothing to do, really, except for this and, you know, some school stuff. But the school stuff is kind of easy because, I, you know, I haven't done it before. But the things we're going to do next week is kind of a repetition for me since I've already worked through it by mistake. I worked a bit in advance on the project we're going to work with next week. So, yeah, all good, all fine. And we're having this little project right here that is going... Well, I would say splendidly, rather well, actually. So I don't know why I'm tired, but just keep in mind, if I'm, you know, drifting in or drifting out, that's probably why. But yeah, that's not why you came here today. You came here today because we're going to discuss another reporter's four original dimensions. The last one. I don't know why I did five. The last one, the fourth. And it is individualism versus collectivism. Short for IDV, or IDV for short, rather. As, you, as per usual, I'm going to read the definition. I'm going to re, like discuss it with some countries and stuff. And then I'm going to put in my own experiences at the end. Would like to show a disclaimer. Not show a disclaimer, but just say this yet again. And I know I'm sounding like a broken tape recorder, but this is rather important. And it is that just because a country has been classified with a specific culture, mate, yeah, do with me? doesn't mean that all of the people in that country identify with that culture. They might feel like they're on the other side of the spectrum. They can be high and they can be low just because the country is classified in one way. As I said, doesn't mean that all the individuals in the country are. And this is something that Hofseed has gotten lots of criticism for and there is lots of criticism out there for you to engage in. But without any further ado, let's get into the definitions. Or to the definition. And this one is quite a long one actually it starts with the individual and then the collective part so <clears throat> the high side of this dimension called individualism can be defined as a preference for a loosely knit social framework in which individuals are except are expected sorry to take care of only themselves and their immediate fam families Oh, that sounded so bad, didn't it? It was so broken, you know, I'm tired as I said, but yeah, it was expected in families there <laughs> Its opposite, collectivism, represents a preference for a tightly knit framework in society in which individuals can expect their relatives or members of a particular in-group to look after them in exchange for unquestioning loyalty. And if you want to boil this down, you can talk about a I or we perspective. Basically, if you're high in individualism, it's probably going to be a lot of, you know, me, I. The I, the me, me, myself, and Philip. <laughs> because you're more concerned about your family, your work, your future, you as a person. You know, I is the perspective that you're looking at from, uh, that you're looking for. However, if you're low in this dimension, you're more towards collectivism, you're thinking about we, our, a more, you know, broad perspective of everything. You with me? So instead of thinking about my own future and myself in the first place and in the first term, I'm thinking about who are we as a collective. And this is something we're rather good at in Sweden, but we'll get to that in a second. Now we're going to move over to discussing some, you know, country stuff. So I'm going to move over here yet again and shebang! Here we have it, mates. And today we're back with the blue, purple, and green approach. As you can see here, you know, I can see it too, at least with production, with some, you know, things in post-production I will be able to see it here. The blue one today is not France. 
I know what you're thinking. Crazy. But no, it's actually El Salvador. And if you haven't heard about it, it's in... I would love to say it's in Central America, but I think it's in South America. That's probably more correct to say. But in between there, somewhere. <laughs> and they are rather high low. Sorry, they're rather low on individualism. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Whilst both France and Sweden, purple and green respectively, is rather high in individualism. Which I think is rather odd, because my experience as a Swede is that we're a very collective people. We think about us, we think about we, you know? We think about us as a people, but that could be wrong. Now, I can also see the argument for why Sweden is high in individualism and so for France as well, because we are a developed country. And in the developed countries we have these. And we love these, more than we love people, really. Ah, oh, that sounded harsh, didn't it? But you know, in general, that's what you read about, that the millennials, people like me, or no, sorry, the 90s kids, you know, stuff like that. Generation, whatever they call it, genera generation phone, generation phone, generation portable and wireless. <laughs> we are the generation who love our phone more than people, and that's why we're thinking about an I more than we. And I can totally see that be a thing. <clears throat> it's also important to mention that, yes again, we're a developed country, so that's why we have them. Now I know that phones are things that's spreading all over the world, it just depends on which, you know, generation of phones we're talking about. But generally in the sense of, I'm always wearing with me a mini computer, why would I talk to anybody else when I have all the information I want to in my pocket? And that's, ba I think that is kind of why Sweden is rather high. Now I know that this study of Hofstede was made before phones. And I can also say that in, then I can just go back to since we're developed countries, we've always had, you know, some sort of thing that we think is more interesting. And we always had ourselves, you know, our jobs. We have us, we have me, I'm important. And that's just, you know, a developed way of thinking, I think, that we are comfortable enough to have a me perspective. I don't have to care about any, everybody else because I'm. I'm perfectly, I will be perfectly well off just thinking about myself because society is functioning in such a way that I can be selfish and still gain. On the other hand of the spectrum, we have El Salvador. And I have a mate from university who is from El Salvador. So I will not state that I know anything about El Salvador in particular more than what he has said to me. But what he has said is that they're way down in collectivism, right? Family is a big thing. And not only your family, no, or rather, not only my family, but yours as well. So, our families are important. They're more of a collective people. Easy as that. And as I said, I don't know quite that much about El Salvador, so I'm not gonna deep dive into it. I think I'm going to discuss this dimension more in my own experience, as we're gonna get to in a moment. But, just do this. Shulam! Now you can see everything, hopefully. I will fix it yet again, because I'm getting rather, you know, comfortable with this. <laughs> with the editing of pictures, and you can see that, yeah, El Salvador is quite high on uncertainty avoidance as well, medium to high in power distance, masculinity as well, they have a bit more of a macho culture and indulgence, they're like super high on. Almost as high as they are in uncertainty avoidance, just giving you a fair understanding of what El Salvador is on the dimensions and on the scale, so to say. But yeah, that was pretty much it for the different countries. Now I will discuss with you Individual individualism and collectivism as I have approached it and yeah, this is going to kind of contradict what I just said But you know, it's my own experience my own observations not Hofstetter's <laughs> or not Hofstede's So what are my experiences? Well, I was going to talk about when I two years ago went to New York in the US because in America, you know, they're always US first everybody else second and that meme and all of that good stuff uh, but what I realized when I went from Sweden, which I thought was a very, you know, collective, we're, we're a social, very democratic society. I know the US is democratic as well, and their democracy and freedom embodiment of all of that, all those ideals. But I really thought that, you know, in Sweden we're all equal, we're thinking about us as a people. But when I went to the US, boy, let me tell you, I felt not alone as a foreigner, I felt isolated in a crowd. And I think that the reason why I did that was because other people seemed to be feeling the same way. 
What do I mean with this? Well, I meant that I went to New York and I think that this maybe is a thing that's happening in all big cities on, on the earth. Like all big cities where there are lots of people. You are part of a collective in a way because you're part of this huge amount of people. But you're still not anywhere close to them on the personal level or on the cultural level. So you still feel isolated and on your own even though you're in a group of people. That's my experience with going to the US, by the way, to going to New York. That I felt this cultural clash of me being, a, you know, as part of a Swede, a Swede a part of other Swedes, and then going to New York and be a part of, you know, the collective which I didn't identify with. I know that that quite doesn't isn't what half seeds dimension is. So, yeah, let's let's say this instead. When I went to Greece from Sweden, I went from this perspective, me. And my phone <laughs> and I have my friend with me and when I was there I was constantly thinking me and my friend me and my friend me and my phone 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 me and my friend might have said phone more times than friend there but you know that's the way it works today <laughs> unfortunately but yeah I went there or we went there yeah that's how much of an eye perspective I have oh I surely am from Sweden then was I uh, and we just thought about ourselves, like, what are we going to do? We didn't think about necessarily the consequences our actions would have when we were there. Was other people were thinking more of a collective. And this is why. When we went to the hostel, like, the, I would like to say a hotel, but it was probably a hostel more like it. That we lived on. The guy who lived there was recommending us all the time to go to this specific restaurant down the street. Now, there were many restaurants. And he had no reason to like direct us there more than probably it was his buddy. But he also said like when we were that when we had visited that, that oh there is so much more places and you should totally go you know there there and there and there and there. I know those people. He had a very he had such a connective personality. It seemed like he was connected really well in that part of Greece where we were. And that also comes down to this cultural behavior of him him feeling that he's part of a collective. You know what I mean? So we. As Swedes probably wouldn't know if a restaurant is good or well if a restaurant is good or bad we probably would know in our like in our small community but if I had a small community I probably wouldn't know the person who is in charge of it was this gent fine gentleman which like was the landlord of the hostel that we were staying at he knew everybody and one can argue that if he knows everybody he's just concerned about his own he see that as his family but I think that is where the difference a core, a cure, a core, a cure, a core, a cure. However you say it, I think that is when the difference is happening. Let's just say it like that. When your family becomes more of you, your friends, their friends are part of your family, the people around you is part of your family, the part of your perspective. That's a part of collectivism. Was individualism, you're thinking more, who are my biological, you know, family? Who are the people I need to take care of? <laughs> Those are the people who are my family. And even less so, you might think that, oh, how can I like shove them away? How can I be more me, less family? So I think that's where the breaking point is, the difference. When you start considering your family and friends and their family and friends as a part of you, hence a we perspective, and when you think about me as a me. And yeah, that was everything for today, mates. I'm gonna end on that note, I hope I wasn't too, you know, I hope my tiredness didn't go through the screen prodigiously as well, but yeah, have a nice one mates, and I'll see you tomorrow with the fifth one, because now we work through the four original main ones. Have a nice day mates.